Welcome everyone to the Wednesday edition, March 2nd, 2022 of the NBA Triple Double Show. Powered by the Predictive Playbook and presented by Sports Memo TV. I'm your host, John Ryan, as always. And also, as always, Ronald Cabang, my good friend and pal, professional sports better, is joining me. We're going to break down three games and try our best to have you covered with at least one best bet. Our show best bets at the end, over 35 shows now, Ronald, are 65% against the number. So sometimes we only have one at the end of the show, sometimes two, but we'll always have at least one out of these three. And honestly, if we don't like any of the games, we're going to be dead honest and say, you know what, uh, you got some handicapping advice here and we're not playing either of the games. Uh, and that's that. But that hasn't happened yet. Hmm. So let's get right to it, Ronald. We're going to look at one of the games that I certainly am interested in. The Knicks are going to go down I-95 to take on the 76ers at the Wells Fargo Center tonight at 7.30 p.m. Philly opened as a 10.5 point home favorite. And they remained a 10.5 point home favorite despite 86% of the tickets being on the Knicks. And that kind of is a red flag. But I, how can I be confident with the Knicks, Ron? I may be out of my mind. But I have some interesting stats here that are a little bit different than what, uh, if you're a regular viewer, this, these are going to be a little bit different. Um, 76 or 16 and 13 at home, but 11 and 18 against the spread and 11 and 18 over under record. As a home favorite, they're 13 and 8, which isn't bad, but they're 8 and 13 against the number, 8 and 13 over under. Knicks are 5 and 13 straight up as road underdogs this season. They're 7 11 against the spread for 39% and have a 10 and 8 over under record. And in case you wanted to know, the 76ers are the double digit home favorite. Since 1996, they're 86 and 12. That's 88% straight up wins. 48 and 49 with one push against the number and a 42 and 55 uh, over under for 44 percent which means there is a, a general lean to the under over the last three seasons the Sixers are 18 and four straight up as a double digit home favorite but 7 and 15 against the number for 32 percent 12 and 10 over under Take it away, Ron. Tell me if you think these trends continue and that this is just too many points to give the Sixers, who just look awesome right now with James Harden. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, this is a this is a good game. I I, I can't really because because of the new additions to the Sixers and and uh, uh, you know it's really hard to really cap this game and use it use like historic trends at, at this point because Agreed. of how how much the, the the offense has changed here. I mean. Uh, a lot of the trends that we're looking at on the Sixers here, ten and three to the under as home favorites in conference games, seven and two to the under as double digit favorites. These were all prior to 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 Harden and and uh, you know obviously their offense has changed. Last four games has gone over on the Sixers games, so this is something where I might like just sit back and kind of see and continue to see how the Sixers have changed and if, if that trend continues um, to go to the overside. Uh, on the Knicks side, they're also a, a sort of an under team here, and um, they're a team that you probably want to look to fade in in certain spots too. I mean, they're eight and seventeen against the spread as uh, against teams with a winning winning record. Um, they're also not that great uh, in in revenge spots here. They're only five and eleven against the spread in, in these revenge spots, and they're uh, playing their first game of a seven game road trip. I mean, obviously, these guys just played each other. Uh, the Sixers won this one by 16, and, and it went over. Uh, this one's kind of all over the board for me. Um, but if anything, I, I would probably lean towards the Sixers and the over here. Yeah, and I'm with you. I, I think I lean just a little bit harder on the over. And uh, you know, I can highlight in the best bet portion maybe with the in-game betting. But... I think I will uh, do 50% pre-flop at the 224.5. And, and then uh, if the Knicks defense uh, can play well at times, and if they start out slow, you might be able to get this at, you know, like 217, 218, which I think would be an outstanding uh, opportunity with the over. But we'll come back to that later. The next game we have here is the Heat and the Bucks, And this could be an Eastern Conference showdown. Uh, Eastern Conference championship matchup is what I'm trying to say. Both teams, uh, based on my models, now have 100% probability of making it to the playoffs. I know that's how, that's astounding, right? I mean, it's so enlightening. Right. Okay, well, that's the probabilities. The Bucks have a 5.4% chance to win the championship. 
the Miami Heat are better, almost double, 8.5% chance to win the championship. We find in this matchup that the Miami Heat are four-point road underdogs at Milwaukee. The total for this game is 226.5. Miami is 7-7 seven seven straight up as an away dog and 9-5 and against the number for 62%, which is the fifth best in the NBA. And the over-under, the over a sparkling 10-4. and four. Milwaukee 16 and 13 uh, over under as a home favorite, but 10 and 19 against the number, which is second worst in the association. And here again, the over is 19 and 10 straight up. So the initial situation here seems to be a lean to the over. What do you think, Ronald? Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. The Heat have Lowry out, and he's one of those guys that are, uh, you know, those. Um, defensive type minded players who play a slow pace um and they're also playing the first game of uh back to back with the nets up next they just beat the bulls by double digits um uh, so the, it it almost seems like uh they they are able to put you know these points up uh against a a team that plays a fast pace and the bucks do that uh, the bucks do that um they're 11 and 4 to the over as road dogs uh 6 and 3 to the over in first game of back to backs and the bucks side they, they've actually gone over in 10 of their last 12 um, and coming off a 24 point win. They got the Bulls, the Bulls and the Suns up next. Um, you know, I, I think it, it's really tough here be just because schedule wise, you know, you never know when teams look ahead, even though they're playing a key game. Um, and uh, the books, they're also seven and four to the over against opponents uh, on the first game of back to backs. To me, I, I still lean the over here. Uh, on the side, it is really, really questionable for me, um, just based on like, uh, you know, momentum and, uh, you know, just overall, like, wh what are they thinking at this point? Because both of these teams are high on the east side, on the east coast. Uh, do they just coast through a win? Do they take these games seriously? Um, it's really tough on the side here, but uh, I do lean towards the over. You know, I agree with you based on the stats that uh, I was mentioning there. I think that's the play. And again, there's only been less than 1% of all NBA games this year where the total uh, was not cheaper during the in-game market. So what I'm trying to say here, for example, only less than 1%. So we have a, a total of 226 and a half. There's been like 99% of the time you can get a better price than 226 and a half in-game. So that that's you know again well, I'm fifty percent pre flop here and then see what we can get at like two nineteen and a half two twenty and uh, you can split it up in twenty five percent increments too you can do it twice if the game really slows down you might be able to get two nineteen and a half and two fourteen and a half hmm. you got to let the volatility you know work for you and when totals are this high obviously it's the highest total we have in all of sports it's going to fluctuate. You may in any game see it go down to 210 and all the way up to 240. And uh, you know, that is kind of rare, but it happens more often than you think. All right, so let's go to the last one here, Ronald, and that is the Portland Trailblazers who, you know, mathematical models do their thing. They have a 0.2% chance of making the playoffs, so they don't – they're out. Mm -hmm. uh, Phoenix, the number one team in all of the NBA. In fact, they have a six-and-a-half game lead over second-best record – and in the same Pacific Division, Golden State Warriors. So it looks like with 20 games to go, Phoenix is going to be the number one seed and have home court advantage throughout the NBA playoffs, which is super for them. It's just awful for anybody that has to play them. Mm -hmm. The Suns are 33-28 and 28 in home games this year. That's eighth best as a home favorite. They're just 15-17 and 17 against the number for 47%. Portland as a road dog, 7-11, straight up and against the spread. Some of those numbers just aren't good, but I don't know if I can lay 13-and-a-half with Phoenix. What do you think? Yeah, this is also a tough game here. I, I think our, <laughs> our all three games are really hard to to, to cap. Um, not only that, it's also very early in the morning. Um, but yeah, So the, the Blazers, they have a whole bunch of guys out. Uh, obviously, Nurkic is out. That's a, a big piece that they're missing here. And uh, they were actually heading into the break on a strong note uh, before. Uh, and then after the break, they obviously lost two in a row uh, by 30 plus points. Um, so I think, uh, you know, maybe maybe the team that they were playing against uh, prior to the break were kind of just like 
you know, getting ready for the for the uh, the whole week off or or what it, whatever it may be. Um, and the Blazers took advantage of that, and now we're seeing them kind of go back to where we expected them to be. Um, and uh, you know, some of the trends that we're looking at too, as as uh, road dogs in conference games, they're three and ten against the spread. Um, they're twelve and twenty one against the spread against teams with a winning record. So we expect these guys not to to cover in games against uh, these types of teams like the Suns. But obviously, the Suns. Um, they're they're, they're going to be without Chris Paul. Um, but they one thing they might have back today is campaign who who uh, Cameron Payne, um, who's a serviceable uh, point guard who who played well for them last season uh, in you know in uh, in the reserve role. Um, and uh, they don't, I don't see any scheduling issues, no fatigue issues on the Sun side. Uh, they just lost two in a row, so there could be some motivation here to to really just uh, you know pour it on the, these this Blazers team. Um, so to me, I know it's a, a big number, um, but I would probably lean towards the Suns' way. I really can't back the Blazers in this spot. Um, if anything, uh, maybe maybe even a look to the over uh, with Nurkic out. Maybe the the Blazers keep pushing the pace, um, and, and the Suns also without Chris Paul, uh, you know, a quicker pace there as well. Campaign he he really does push the pace when he's on the court. Um, so maybe a look towards the Suns uh, and, and the over here. Yeah, it's good with the over. The over, I have one little trend here. The last six uh, games, there are, the Suns are on a nice four, I'm sorry, five and one over record when facing a team with a losing record. So that shows they don't take the gas, they don't take the foot off the gas pedal. And uh, it doesn't matter what the margin is, they just, they get it done. That's why the game goes over. So uh, let's move on to our best bet segment here. And I guess this is the most popular part of the show for people that are watching. We do appreciate you watching our shows. What do you think uh, the best bet is now of these three games? Oh man, this is a this is a tough one. Uh, we we'll have to talk we, to the producer and get and get better games, I guess, to handicap. Yeah, <laughs> we we picked some tough <laughs> games here. Um, you know, what, what do you think? What where are you where are you where is your head at in, in these three games uh, here? My my head, I think, is on the over in the Sixers Knicks game and that fifty percent pre flop at the two twenty four and a half, and then. Uh-huh. Uh, two seventeen and a half. Uh, for the re- the remaining fifty percent, and I, I think well, now I think I'll I'll say right now that's how I'm going to play it. Uh, I'm obviously going to watch that game because I'm just enthralled with the combination of Embiid and Harden. I don't think anybody, honestly, even the most crazed Sixer fan, thought it was going to be like this. Yeah. Now yeah. I think eventually, maybe over the last twenty games of the regular season, some of these uh, coaches. Uh, that face the Sixers will study it. They'll figure out a defensive scheme that may slow them down. But one of the reasons I do like the over is they have now, in my opinion, the best inside-outside game in the NBA. You can't double either one of them. You and I said that before they even played together. Yeah. It was going to be a nightmare. And the nightmare, you know, is, um, you know, it's a hurricane. It's, 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 just, it's so much bigger and better than I had ever imagined. And their offensive efficiency numbers, I think we'll find them near the top of the leaderboard in the NBA uh, by the end of the season. So I, I think they're going to average – they can average over 120 points per game down the stretch, in my opinion, and that's why I do like it because the market does not anticipate that as of yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I like it. I think you just convinced me to get go with that over <laughs> Let's, let's, hope, rock, let's, with that. let's right. rock with that one. Let's rock with that one. You got it, man. So that's our best bet. The over in the 76ers Knicks game. Leave comments below where you can in the YouTube channel here. We'll do our best to answer them. If you have any compliments, complaints, do that as well. For some reason, we like compliments better than complaints. So yeah. do us a favor and hit that like button. And that's just for fun. Let's see if we can get 100 likes. I think that would be pretty darn cool. We get enough views to do it. Sometimes it goes over a thousand views, and ten percent of you just while you're listening, just click it. it it's effortless, and we <laughs> would greatly appreciate it. So, Ronald, thank you for your time. Make sure, guys and gals, you get over to SportsMemo.com and get on board our NBA and NCAA basketball specials that SportsMemo is doing just for Ronald and I. Yeah. They are heavily discounted. It comes out to like like less than two dollars a pick for the next 30 days or through march madness it's kind of insane but we want to spread the good word so on behalf of ronald myself and sports memo tv have a great night much success to everybody we'll be back friday with another edition of the triple double show until then bet with your head never over it and may all the wins be yours
Each and every Wednesday at sportsmemo.com, you will get a 33% discount on everything you fit into your cart using coupon code CART33 when checking out. Whether it's a daily package, a one-day all-access, a 3-7 or 30-day package, a full season of sports of your choice, or a full 12 month from your favorite handicapper, you will save 33% using coupon code CART33 on Fill Your Cart Wednesday. You can fill your cart as many times as you want each and every Wednesday. And even better, coupon code CART33 never changes and will become active each week at 12.01 and last until the clock strikes midnight.